In this question, we have to find a range of possible values for EY. First, we'll use this formula from section 4.7 of the formula booklet to write an expression for EY, the expected value of the distribution. What the formula tells us is that in order to get EY, we have to multiply each Y value by the corresponding probability and then add this product. So we get 1 times Q, which is Q, plus 2 times Q, so 2Q, plus 3 times Q, so 3Q, plus 4 times R, so 4R. Collecting the terms, we get that EY is equal to 6Q plus 4R. To find the range of possible values for EY, we'll consider the extreme values for the ranges that we found for R and Q. One of the extreme cases is when R is 0. As we saw in question part C, in this case, Q is one third. Substituting into the expression for EY, we get that it is equal to 6 times one third plus 4 times 0. Carrying out this calculation, we get that EY is 2. The other extreme case is when R is 1 and Q is 0. In this case, for EY, we get 6 times 0 plus 4 times 1, so here EY is 4. 2 and 4 are our two extreme values for the range of EY, therefore we can write that EY is between 2 and 4. An exam-taking tip that you can take away from here is that the common term hence means that you must use the preceding work to obtain the required result, so make sure that on such questions you use results that you got in previous question parts. This means that the common term hence is not only a hint that you can use the result from the previous question part, but it actually tells you that if you don't use the result from the previous question part, you will not earn full marks.